they have to be evaluated, they have to be diagnosed, mm -hmm. and they have to be DMXed. I just wanted to step back a little bit and go over the nuances of waiting and the art that comes into it. So many people ask me, and I'm sure you've taken a lot of calls as well, where people say, isn't there a one size fits all? Like, can't I just slap everybody into a rejuvenator weight? Or can't I put a two pound halo on everybody? Or, you know, and the answer, the short answer is that if you're looking for a very general kind of improvement and you don't have any significant symptoms, then we might be able to find something that's like, yeah, just where the, it would probably be the rejuvenator, mm -hmm. and it'd probably be a one pounder, and you could probably tell almost everybody to put on that one pound rejuvenator weight and wear it for you know a couple minutes a day, and it's gonna have some benefit if they're aware of where their body is, and almost like a Tai Chi type of simple step. But when we get into people that are suffering, Scott, they have headaches, they have, you know, they can't take a step without feeling that like they're gonna fall. They have eye pain, they have lightheadedness, dizziness, disorientation, they don't feel like themselves, they're always anxious, they're in fight or flight, their body's just not, there's something off neurologically. That's where that detail goes in. And prescribing a one size fits all can get a little bit more challenging. I'm sure. And you know, what's been your experience with that? Do you have people kind of ask you? <clears throat> without knowing everything about them and well being that i am not a trained doctor like you i have to really look at this from a layman's approach and so i don't give a lot of guidance to people especially patients or consumers in general they have to come to an expert they have to be evaluated. They have to be diagnosed, mm -hmm. and they have to be DMXed. Yeah. It, because, as you say, you, you know, one we can't apply one product to everybody and expect proper correction and symptomatic relief. The rejuvenator, like you say, it's a that is the one size fits all tool that can help people daily remind them of their posture when they're sitting at the computer. It's just enough weight so that if you lean forward, it makes you uncomfortable. And so your writing reflex response, it triggers you back. It's not gonna necessarily correct lordosis, we know that. The rejuvenator is more of a, um, it's a, more of a therapeutic tool, whereas the head weighting is more corrective, I think, is safe to say. I agree. So, um, we do find instances where the rejuvenator does improve the lordosis. It's typically in somebody with a long neck, very thin, and a little bit weaker musculature. Yeah. And the one pounder, when we get the head to be more aware of being over the center of the body, right. it does help with the cervical curvature. If you have someone with a really strong, thick neck, the rejuvenator is going to do less to change the curve and more just to activate all the suboccipital muscles, bring awareness, proprioception, input, start to strengthen some of the vulnerable spots. I think it's just a, it's a wonderful daily tool to use as a, uh, and it's also does help with um, myofascial issues or musculoskeletal issues, uh, superficial. Where we're talking about neck pain, you wake up in the morning, you've got a stiff neck, or maybe the shoulders are tight. I use it every day. Could you tell me, Scott, the story when you first started to use a basic elemental rejuvenator? When Tom placed it on your desk, you, you told me the story. You were in your real estate career and you never anticipated changing into doing Halo. And, you know, Tom was like, you, you were having a headache. Tell, you know, tell me that story again. Real quick. Um, so Tom walked in to my office one day unannounced and handed me this very crude device, which happened to be a bicycle inner tube <laughs> with lead buckshot, and we, we now know about lead and the use of lead. 
and he sewed it, just sewed it up the end. And he just said, here, put this on your head, you'll feel better. <laughs> and I looked at him like, this guy's crazy. So I took it home, put it on my fireplace mantle and left it there for two months. Yeah. I just couldn't, I couldn't get myself to, to understand if my neck is bothering me as it was, uh, for mostly from surfing, from the strain on my neck from when you're in a paddling position, you're putting a lot of strain on the neck. And I couldn't understand conceptually how putting weight on my head would improve my situation. So fast forward, he kept bothering me. Have you tried it? Have you tried it? Have you tried it? So finally, I took it to my office. One day, I, I had a headache, uh, just uh, every day kind of headache. And um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll put this thing on. I put it on, put my headphones back on. And then after four or five minutes, I got off the phone, put the headphone off. I took the headband off and got up to go do some things. And, I, and all of a sudden, like a light went off. And I walked, my gosh, my headache is gone. <laughs> That's odd. So I, we had uh, three gals working in our office at that time. And so Rieko, I said, you get headaches all the time, right? And she said, yeah. I said, take this and just try it. Yeah. So we started having people in the office try it, and sure enough, we found it with a te with a normal tension headache, five minutes gone. One after another, you just had every a bunch of people single trying it. person. Then I started having other realtors in the office trying it. So you couldn't deny it that it was just a fluke injury, the accident, or I couldn't deny that there was something there. going on. Unbeknownst to me, I didn't know anything about proprioception. I didn't know anything about neurologic function yeah. and how they react when weight is put on the head. And, and so that was the aha moment when I realized there's something consistent here happening amongst these individuals that have neck pain. And there were people that would try it and that didn't have any symptomatic issues, but when they put it on, they said, oh, I feel good. <laughs> I'm like, what's that all about? So that's how it started. And that's when I knew there was something behind, this. there was some science to this idea of putting weight on the head. And that was really the spark that got you to that was the, that take was, a whole new path towards starting ALO. Exactly. I mean, I literally, within weeks, of reckoning of the, of the light going off, I said, you know what? I'm going to turn it a different direction in life. Yeah. And I want to start helping people yeah. in a different way mm -hmm. out of real estate yeah. into health. And we have a parallel because when I first knew that I had to become a chiropractor, I was hiking in the Arizona mountains and I've done a video on this and shared with you know the world that uh, it was really like getting struck by a lightning bolt that I just knew in that moment that I had to become a chiropractor. And it went back to my brother dealing with bad problems with his spine, scoliosis, mm -hmm. but I couldn't shake the feeling, Scott. I was studying business and I wanted to be like my father and do sales, but I just couldn't shake the feeling that I had to pursue this path. And with Tom and that weight and how you almost want, you didn't want to accept it. You were just like, forget about this crazy thing. You know, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I'm not going to do it. But it was almost like, you know, you, in a way that you were, you know, called to really pursue this. And, and without you having had that moment, you and Dr. Wogan wouldn't have connected. And now I wouldn't be here with you today. So there's just so many of those like serendipitous moments that are pretty neat just to have documented and it's good. The world. It's, it's, it is, it's, it's fate. And, yeah. and yet fate brings us together for a reason mm -hmm. and they're usually for positive reasons, not negative reasons. When you're trying to do something positive for the world, becoming a chiropractor. Definitely. And that's a noble practice. Thank you. Um, because, you know, chiropractic is not well received in the general public. It just, uh, and so I think it's incumbent upon doctors like you to change those perceptions slowly one patient at a time because the power of word of mouth in my view is is still 
the most powerful tool.